The first deck segments to arrive on site were the two starter panels for the Tinkau Tower. These vast assemblies, measuring 23 by 16 metres, were offloaded from the barge by night when sea conditions were calm. Even then extreme care was necessary. The limited space at the base of the tower required that the grid be transported in the vertical position. Dubbed the rocket launcher, a 20 meter steel frame mounted on a pair of hydraulic trailers held the grid as the assembly made its snail's pace approach to the lifting position. By dawn the next day, the heavy lifting system on top of the tower had lifted the 60-ton panel into position some 70 meters above the ground. The panel was then pulled inwards to engage hinges temporarily attached to the tower. Over a period of three hours, the panel was lowered into its final position, joining its previously installed twin on the other side of the tower. In the following months, starter grids were installed at the Central and Qingyi Towers in the by now familiar fashion. Following the erection of the starter panels and the lifting of the steel cross struts, transverse tower stabilization cables were installed between the lower transition slabs and the cross struts and from there to the tower heads. Like the mast of a sailboat, the slender tower now has the required stability to cope with high wind loads. Precast concrete deck panels, 4.5 meters square, were placed onto the steel grid of the starter panel to complete the first segment of the composite deck. In a typical grid, 12 such precast panels were placed 
and the joints concreted to give the segment its composite characteristics. Many hands make light work. Well, sometimes. Manhandling the high-density polyethylene sheath for the stay cables was certainly labor-intensive, but it was also an excellent boost for the team spirit. The deck stay cables consist of up to 58 strands of seven galvanized wires. Each of the strands was individually installed between the dead anchors at deck level and the stressing anchors in the tower heads. Using a wheeled detachable trolley which prevented chafing, each of the strands was pulled up inside the sheath. The sheaths have an external helical protrusion which reduces rain-wind induced vibrations of the cable. Within the tower heads, each of the strands was stressed by isotensioning. On each of the four deck cantilevers originating from a tower, a stiff-legged derrick crane was assembled to lift steel grids and concrete panels for the growing bridge decks. The grids were typically 18.8 meters wide and 13.5 meters long between cable anchorages. Alternating on each side of the tower, new grid pairs were connected to the already completed deck cantilever with splice plates and high strength friction grip bolts. At the cable anchorages, the new grid pair was joined by connecting cross girders. The erection of the first grids adjacent to the towers provided valuable experience and allowed a reduction of the deck erection cycles to as little as four days. In an erection cycle, a new grid pair was lifted and connected, two pairs of stay cables were installed, 24 precast panels were placed and concreted and the derrick cranes were moved forward, ready for lifting of the next grid. Over a four month period, 75 grid pairs were erected from all three towers simultaneously adding over 1,000 meters to the bridge deck. December 1997 marked the all-time high in the history of the project, when 2,680 tons of steel, 1,200 tons of stay cables, and 11,200 square meters of deck were erected in a single month.
As the deck cantilevers grew in length, temporary cables had to be anchored into the tower foundations to prevent excessive movement of the decks and deflections of the tower tops in high wind conditions. <laughs> 